Tell us about the path to get here, John. What are the more interesting points that these two teams have uh, on their way to this championship? Yeah, because it's kind of a paradox because Toronto have been this big club and they burst onto the scene in 2007 and they had crowds no one had ever seen and atmosphere no one had ever seen. They sort of pushed MLS away from a suburban mindset to let's build our stadiums downtown. Let's appeal to young adults and, and get atmospheres as a result. But they were like the Maple Leafs with whom they share ownership, completely dysfunctional yeah. for a very long time. And, and Greg Vanny, who's the coach now, was their ninth coach in eight years. But they finally figured it out, and they got the right pieces in. They didn't panic last year when they bombed out in the first round of the playoffs. And everything has gone right for them, and they have been lights out in the playoffs. And Seattle, consistently good. They came into the league in 2009. They were in the playoffs every year. They won the U.S. Open Cup. They won Supporter Shield. And this year it looked like, okay, finally, let's blow it up and take it down to the brass tacks. And they were second from last place in July. And they bring in a new coach who was their assistant. They bring in a new playmaker, Nicholas Ladero, and, and they have been on fire since. And so this was the last year we really expected to see Seattle actually get over the hump. And for the first time in MLS history, 21 years in, two of its expansion teams are playing off for the final, which is very neat. That's so exciting. What are some of the keys to this game? What do you think is going to determine who brings home the MLS Cup? Each team has very talented individuals. Sebastian Jovinko for Toronto has put up numbers we've never seen in MLS, and he could have easily been MVP twice in a row. Josie Altidore, both for the U.S. national team as well as for Toronto, has been playing phenomenally. Michael Bradley's the captain of the national team for a reason. For Seattle, Jordan Morris, Rookie of the Year. He's the next big star in American soccer. Nicholas Ladero has had a wonderful half season, was the newcomer of the year. Both teams, though, are stocked with sort of, you need those veteran guys that have been around, that have seen it all. You've got multiple MLS Cup winners on both sides. I, for me, I think it's going to come down to just who can play the game on their terms. These are two teams that want to come out and play soccer, as opposed to a Colorado or a Montreal who lost in the conference championships, somewhat more defensive-minded, more counterattack-minded. Both these teams want to come out and play. Both have sort of dealt with crazy things happening very well. So I guess who can better impose themselves? We go, okay, this is definitely Seattle's game. Look at Ladera. Or we go, this is definitely Toronto's game. Jovinko's all over the place. Okay, this is, this is a game that's going to be played in Toronto. Major home field advantage for Toronto FC. We saw last year, though, the road team was able to go uh, into a, an opponent's stadium and bring home the cup. So... How can the Sounders build on that recent history, or is this going to be too much to overcome? Yeah, I think it's four out of the six when it's been played at the stadium of the home team, whether it's been deliberate or not. They have prevailed, and, and Portland meeting Columbus in Columbus last year was the exception. Seattle's been very good away from home. Um, they went into Dallas, got the result they needed. They were the only team all year to beat Colorado away in the second leg of the Western Conference Final. I don't think they're going to be too phased by it. The atmospheres in Toronto, as much as they have 36,000, and we would probably have had 66,000, a full CenturyLink field had the wow. final been there. But that atmosphere is amazing. Where we were in the press box last Wednesday calling the game, Brad Friedel and I, we were swaying back and forth. Oh, they were so loud, and they were stomping their feet in extra time. It was amazing. So, But I, I think the atmosphere, the conditions, it'll be below freezing. There might be snow. I just I don't think Seattle for what they've dealt with this year for what they've been through and their ability to rise to the occasion they won in LA no one beats the Galaxy in LA. I don't think they're going to be phased by it. I don't think it's going to be a factor. And you're going to have that window open, right? I mean 100%. You got to go. Listen, we we get extremes in MLS. We've we've called I've called games in Kansas City when it's 110 heat index. I called a game in Kansas City a couple years ago. It was 15 degrees at kickoff. So <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm thrilled that's, windows open. Yeah, that's fun. Bring it on. It'll be great.